Saludos y bendiciones. Mi nombre es Elaine Enríquez. Bienvenidos a OBM Radio. Muchísimas gracias por conectarse con nosotros a través de todas nuestras redes sociales. Estamos en Facebook Live, YouTube Live, OVM Radio Live. Hoy tenemos un programa muy diferente porque siempre estamos renovando, trayéndoles sorpresas. Queremos que ustedes disfruten de todas las etapas eh, de la emisora, de los programas. Ahora eh, vamos a hacer algo totalmente diferente, como dije anterior, y es que el programa es Viva las Tardes con Elaine, con esta servidora, pero en esta tarde vamos a hacerlo en inglés, porque nuestra invitada se siente mucho más cómoda hablando en el idioma inglés. Entonces el programa se convierte a Live in the Afternoons with Elaine. Muchísimas gracias porque ahora les presento nuestra bella invitada y voy a estar hablando en inglés. Espero eh, sigan sintonizando y espero nos puedan entender en el transcurso del programa. Cualquier cosita, pues eh, en algún momento a lo mejor les hable en español también para aquellos que no conocen el inglés. Queremos que no se nos vaya y que se quede ahí con nosotros. Tenemos muchas cositas que vamos a hablar que van a ser de mucho interés para todos ustedes. Well, I want to welcome our special guest, Pastor Jeannie Santos. How are you? Welcome back. <laughs> It's good to be back, Pastor Elaine. It's good to be back. And I will do my best to not pull any of my shenanigans on <laughs> the show. <laughs> best of the odds to you and to your staff, to all of you at OBM. It's always a great pleasure, praise God, um, to, to see you, see what you're doing. Congratulations on all that you are accomplishing. And congratulations again on your beautiful daughter graduating. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Jeannie. I'm so thankful with God. I'm so thankful with the audience uh, that listen to our programming and visit us around the world. And I'm so thankful to you for taking the time because you're at work at this moment. So what we see behind here is part of a school <laughs> <laughs> room <laughs> that you have taken to be able to be with us, and I'm so grateful. But tell us all about it. What has been taking place in your life at this moment? At this moment, <laughs> I have glitter all over. If you guys don't see it. I was doing Christmas decorations. Well, as many that do know me know, um, I'm, I'm very multifaceted. So right now, yes, we are at the conference room here. I work for Ayaho Social Services. And uh, so I am a su support coordinator for families with children with special needs. And so I place the workers, that's what I did for over three years, a respite worker and the families together to work in the home and, and relieve the parents from uh, the stresses that they may go through so they could have a little time for themselves. So I'm always here either conflict, doing conflict resolution, putting out fires. Now, this is aside from everything else that I do to the kingdom of God. But to me, my, my job here is also ministry. It's very You're important. such a beautiful soul. And um, I do admire yeah. what you do. I admire how God uh, uses you, especially in different areas. But I do want to learn a little bit more of how you help these parents with uh, kids that have special needs. That's so important that these are individuals that are just as important as everyone else and that you take the time Uh, the love and dedication to nurture these parents so they can nurture their children. I, I began being a respite worker back in 2016. Uh, at the time, my daughter was working with an organization and and she recommended and and shared with me that I would be it would be something that she thought I'd be great at uh, being that I've been a pastor and a chaplain and I'm always I, I'm a people person. Uh, so. I started working as a respite worker back then, and um, 2016, I had the uh, the most awesome uh, family that I worked with for two years, and uh, it's funny because God puts everything together, and that family, the mom, was the one who put me onto writing my books, 
and she's a book author herself. Uh, shout out to Nell Escalante, love you so much. And then afterwards, I just continue working as a respite worker. What a respite worker does and a combat worker, they go to the house. In New York, you get more days. In Jersey, you get like one day with the family a week, so you gotta have different families. But it depends on the need of the child. Um, some people think, you know, that that is easier said than done uh, for these families. I find myself um, going to families where uh, they, they're under so much stress because there is not enough services for them to help them uh, with their special needs child. It's very stressful, especially for single parents. I've got single dads and single moms. So after working all, all this time with, with, you know, the respite community and being a respite worker and providing those services, uh, during the shutdown, I had no cases whatsoever. And I was also a translator for a funeral home. And, and that, because I worked with the Spanish community and, and with that, there was like not, uh, not really a lot of like Spanish speaking people that needed me. So there was like, I was without work for a little bit. Then one day I get the phone call from my supervisor here and she tells me, how would you like to come on board uh, to, to work full time? Long story short, now, I became the respite support coordinator, the Spanish speaking one dealing with the Spanish families. And there are times pastor that I put my head down and just pray because it is, um, it, it's something when, when I, I have cases that are, don't have the right people to go to their home or they are so severe that I, we can't, give them the services. I've had mothers in distress crying out, you know, I can't do this no more. I need some time. I've had a, a single dad. I had a single dad not long ago because the mom passed away. And these are children, some are autistic, some have a muscular dystrophy, cerebral palsy, all different kinds. Some are, are, are able to speak, some aren't, but they're all special. They're all unique. They're all wonderful. They're all made in the image of God, regardless of their diagnosis. And so I feel a, a huge responsibility in my heart when I sit behind uh, the desk and I'm putting, and I have to match up the worker. And so I wanna make sure that that worker has a heart like I did that loved the family and that the families who fall in love with that worker and that they can work together as a unit. I also was a mom um, and I, I'm not gonna elaborate too much on this, but I, I had a, a, a child at one time, now my child is, is, they're all adults and my child is fine, thank God. But there was a time where I was the mom who needed the these services also as well. And um, so as a mom and as a respite worker, as a support coordinator, as a pastor, I am able to bring it all in and provide those services to the best of my ability and to God's glory and honor. And I pray that I can uh, help as many families as I can while I'm here. Pastor, as I'm listening to you, I'm just receiving your heart. And um, I, I share that with you because it's so important to have that compassion and that love for people yeah. that are in need. And um, one of the things that I also would like to talk to you about is about your ministry. You're a pastor, yeah. so I'm imagining that the Lord has a lot to do with what you do on a daily basis. So I want to talk about that, and I want to move a little bit further into your position and you as an author and the many books that you have written. And I'm imagining that that has a lot of reason behind it since what you do is working with people. You love people. You you love to uh, share the good news and to give them comfort, I would imagine, in a perspective due to the biblical um, teachings that we as pastors um, encounter on a, on a daily basis and how is it is important to share that with everyone else that we meet, either, uh, with the people we work with, with the people we encounter, through the books that you write. I'd like you to enlighten us and take us through this period of your life where you are the author of many books and also how you uh, embrace people in their needs 
also through the grace and the favor of God in your life? That was a long question. <laughs> Praise, God. Praise the Lord. I believe. I love that I made you laugh. Uh, I, and let me start that I believe that I've been broken up in, in, in pieces like a loaf of bread to feed multitudes. I don't think there's enough books written about Jeannie, Jeannie's life. Amen. Um, and as time goes on and the Lord um, releases me to release certain information, certain parts of my personal self, I will because of the compassion that he's poured in my heart. But the reason that that compassion has been poured within my heart, besides the fact that we operate in the in the food of the spirit, right? Uh, it, it's because, you know, sometimes you have to go through certain things in life in order to be able to relate to people, be relatable. And, you know, nothing that happens in our lives is wasted. Even though at the time that we're in the fire or the desert or the wilderness, we don't feel that way. We're like... What are, you, what are you doing, right? So I, my very first book was written in 1998 and I revised it a couple of years ago, My Psalm Stores from the Heart. And it was just given out locally. It was local pastors that that helped me put it out. Amen, from, a, from the sister church where I assisted. And um, in and, and that time, you know, I, I just turned 23 years in November of ministry. And I, that's when I started doing, uh, other than serving at the church, doing ministry outside, preaching outside, putting together uh, events and whatnot. And it started with that, that I was pouring out my heart in a poetry book, uh, it, which is called My Psalm Stores from the Heart. It's just poetry. It was poetry of, of, of a woman, a, a mom, a wife at the time, children, distress, pain, heartache that I couldn't even share with other people, but God knew about it. And I would wake up every night at 3 a.m., like around 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and, 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 and write uh, in that in that book. But I didn't think I would write again, even though it kept being, God kept speaking to me, and there were many encounters. And, and yes, we got to be careful with prophetic word. People always judge the word with the word of God. Amen. But God did speak to me many times. He would show people I've never met about my books. And then the time came, the time came, praise the Lord. And I've been able to write uh, a few books. I started with uh, Pearl Drops, uh, Pearl Drops Inspiration for My Treasure Box, which was just a collection of quotes that I put together since people kept quoting me because I, I was up and doing radio since like, let me see, I started uh, on AM back in the 90s. Then I came back on internet radio in 2006. Then I opened up my own in 2008. So people always followed me and anything I quoted, they put it together, they put it out there. And a friend of mine said to me, why don't you put all your quotes in a book and start like that? Because I didn't know how to come to the place of writing about my pain or my heartache. How do you put yourself out there, you know? But I started with that. And then I went on to keep writing. I went on to revise my Psalms. I did Bessels and Hugs, Love Notes from God, which is a great witnessing tool where people can uh, uh, read a, a love note from God. And I did that through much prayer, much seeking God, because I wanted to be prophetic unto the hearts of the people. Uh, great, great witnessing tool to give out. Then I came, I did Pearl Drops, Treasures from wisdom from my treasure box and i made that book colorful another collection of quotes but i did my book which you interviewed me on uh breathing again and that was wow to write that book it took a lot of tears i went under a lot of attacks i mean i was even the persecutor persecuted me again it was just so much going on but then that book has impacted many lives and then after that it was like you know what i'm not afraid of talking about myself anymore that was to me like one of the worst things to talk about to have to relive everything and to have to share it. And, uh, but I knew that there was a woman and there was a man and there is a minister. There was somebody who needed to know these facts, these things for the benefit of their lives. Amen. And those around them. And so then I, I, I went on, I translated, um, a couple of books into Spanish and, uh, 
in Portuguese as well. I have uh, my latest, latest book is called Oops, I Hit a Bump on the Road. And it's general for the general public. That's for the general public. And it's talking about this time. And it's five very short chapters, but it's to the core because I want to encourage people not to give up in the Lord. Put in my heart translated in Spanish and in Portuguese as well for my Portuguese brethren. Amen. Praise God. I did serve at a Portuguese uh, church for six months back in 2012 as, as an interim uh, Bible study uh, teacher, helping them out. But one of my books in between all that, which is very dear to my heart, is this one. As you all may see, it is knitted. And uh, he formed my inward parts. I had the right to live. And this what was always a little like. There's parts of me in here. Uh, Pastor Wayne, uh, if it wasn't for the love and compassion for those uh, women um, out there, and even men, and the babies, I, I don't, I don't know. I could have, I could have written the book and just because in here I speak about, I, I, I bring up scripture concerning life in the womb, why you know God's purpose, God's plan. I, I share an article that shares the description of an abortion taking place. And there's three young ladies that they volunteer to witness with in here about their testimonies, what they went through. I could have just left it at that, but the laws I know, you have to come up front and you have to let them know that you too committed that choice. You made that choice. You made that error in your life. You, you made it out of fear. You made it out of pressure. You made it out of your back, literally, against the wall. And um, so I, I wrote parts of me in this book, and I don't want to spoil it. I want people to get it. But I wrote parts of me in this book um, that were very intense. I, I will say this, and this may be too much for some people that are going to watch. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to receive this. But I do say this that I do speak about being raped. I was raped and uh, I had an abortion. I couldn't handle it. I wanted to die myself. But you will read the outcome. You will see what God did even in that. And this is why this book is out today. So all that said, there's so much I, 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 I do. I preach, I'm, I'm the senior pastor of the World Christian Center right now. We're an online platform, as you may know, the ministry, the churches in New York. And we don't have our own building. We rented a space. So with the whole COVID thing, it's been, it's been really difficult to even have anybody want to rent you certain spaces. And so we're okay because we we know how to move around online. We stream it through the radio. Um, we do a lot. And, um, and I mean, there's so much that I do, Pastor Elaine, that at times I'm like, ¿Cómo yo voy a hacer eso? How they put the grace of God and... It has to be love in my heart for the people because it's, it's it's a lot, and you know this. Being in ministry takes more than just being in ministry because you you want to you you want to do something. You know, um, it's not about the spotlight. It's not about me fulfilling a dream. It's it's not about any of that. It's it's I know that the things I've gone through, somebody else is going through it. Somebody else is gonna make that wrong turn. And I've been around that corner and I want to say, well, wait, or if they already went through it, I want to say, you're not hopeless. So I pray that all my books, no matter the topic, now I'm in the midst of writing three more, Pastor Elaine, <laughs> amen. And I, I one of them is, 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 is called Standing in the Gap, Praying Your Adult Children Through. And I can't wait to release that one because there's a lot of parents with adult children that are either on drugs or in jail or, you know, teenage girls that are pregnant. Listen, I was a 16 year old that had a baby. He just turned 34 on Friday. Okay. Your daughter is not hopeless. Look at me. God, God did something great in my life. Amen. So. So, yeah, I think I said a lot right there. But I, did I answer the question? What did I answer the question? Praise the Lord. You answered the question abundantly. And the reason for me asking so many questions in one session is because of time. And I want to make sure that we take up. Pastor Jeannie, um, 
When I talk to you, we're always laughing, enjoying every minute of our time together. And yes. one of the things that uh, popped up was um, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And one of them is joy. When Amen. we receive the joy of the Holy Spirit, it just changes everything. It, it allows us to have patience. It allows us to wait. It allows us to be quiet, to be silent, and let God be God in our lives. Every day yeah. we face endeavors. I mean, life is not easy. We all know that. Sometimes it gets really hard. <laughs> Sometimes it's a little smoother. There's bumps, mm -hmm. right? Ups and downs. As you were telling us, how important is it today to give the audience this wonderful message of the Word and the importance of believing in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? is very important very important because we are right now uh in a crossroads in our nation we are right now in a crossroads in in our in our lives period there's so many changes that happen and so many people are discouraged so many people are giving up one of the things as we celebrate a sixth anniversary of the world christian center amen praise god um, this month, we have a series, Keep On Keeping On. Amen. And and to keep on keeping on, it, does, it doesn't mean that you're always going to feel strong to, to do so. And I think it's vitally important uh, to be able to bring out that, that message and encourage the people, especially in the crossroads that we are all at right now, because, amen, if you can be relatable, to someone else, you can let them know, hey, you're not in that boat by yourself. We're all in this boat together. You know, some of us have gotten across shore beforehand. So we're, we're there, we're, we're, we're holding you by, by the hand. And it's really important because it's a matter of life and death. It's, it's a matter of life and death. And and I and I'm not talking about physical life and death. At times it could be. At times there are people that even turn to suicide because they feel so hopeless. They feel they're at the end of their rope. Okay. And guess what? I've been there too. I've been there where I, I've asked God, God, take me home. Take me home. Because I feel so tired. But God did not take me home because I had to go through that process in order to talk to you today. In order to be able to encourage you and tell you, you know what? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil for you are with me. And so if it is so important for us to voice out uh, these things, what we encounter, and not be ashamed of what we've been through because we went through it and God took us through it. And that's part of our schooling is greater. Listen, life school, I know not nobody for Bible college or seminary or anything like that. We must study to show ourselves approved. But the school of life is gr the greatest teacher ever. And when we can surpass that and be able to show somebody, look, I didn't burn in the fire. I didn't drown in the waters. Doesn't Isaiah 43 tell us that? That even if we pass through the waters, we won't drown? But you know, when you read it, you may believe it was the word of God, but in your humanity, you may at times question. But when you see somebody that you personally know or hear what they've been through, and you see, wait a minute, that, that applied to them then I'm no different. God loves me too. So it is so important that we are not embarrassed to say, I've been here, I've been there. God's grace has been sufficient for me because somebody's life may depend on it. Somebody's decision today may depend on that testimony. Pastor Yini, mm -hmm. you have to return. You have to come back. <laughs> the time that you have given us here is just not enough. We have so much to talk about. We have so much to give to the audience, to inspire them, to continue to lift them up. And you are just that special vessel that God has sent on earth to do that. And we are so privileged and honored to have you on this program. And I hope and pray that 
uh, God allows you to return in a timely manner because there's just so much to discuss. I would like to, at this moment, I want to say hello along with you because our time is running and, um, uh, these are special, precious people that are listening around the world. But here are some that you and I know, and that's uh, uh, Evangelist Salmas Vicky Romero is oh. uh, <laughs> watching <laughs> and sending her love. love and you, Yes. Her. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And we have here Sarita Milagros Gaud Nieves. We want to Beso say hi. Bien, She's amazing. Thank you for always Amen. listening and keeping us in tune. <laughs> Andrew uh -huh. Miller, uh, Vicky's husband, is also here connected. Thank you so much. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We have uh, Palabra de Bendición is watching. Casa Amen. de Dios. Uh, we want mm -hmm. to uh, bless you at this time as we bless everyone that is uh, connected here with uh, sending us Amen. messages. Uh, Brenda Amen. Sain Diaz, thank you Amen. so much. She's watching. Hola a todos en OVM Radio. Dios me los bendiga. Thank you so much for sending us blessings. We send you blessings right back and everyone yes. else. Um, as we are connected through social media. Now, this program will be watched in the morning, afternoon, evenings. And our prayers, uh, Pastor uh, Jeannie, is that everyone receives this wonderful message. And now Amen. that we've come to the end of the program, I Please. want you uh, to take over and um, just say what is in your heart. Amen. Well, first and foremost, Pastor Lane, thank you so much. I'm I'm hoping that next time I'm physically in Florida. There's Woo! plans. There's plans. I, I'm yes. not going to give the spoiler alert. There's plans, okay? You know, so I may be popping up when, when you least expect it in 2021, peeking my head, you know, and uh, saying, what's up? Oh, we yeah. staff, God bless you all and keep up the good work. Keep pressing on. Pastor Elaine, just, just remember this, you know, that that God has entrusted you, praise God, with taking these interviews and the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. So don't be discouraged no matter what you see in front of you. The best is yet to come. And to all of those that have taken the time and the opportunity to, to watch, thank you for taking your time to listen. And muchas gracias por tomar su tiempo para escuchar. Le bendigo en el nombre de Jesús. I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare. Yo decreto y declaro. Hallelujah. That God's peace is in your life. Que la paz de Dios está en tu vida. That nothing is wasted. Que nada es gastado. That God has a plan. Que Dios tiene un plan. And you're in it. Y tú estás en ese plan. Besos y hugs. Que Dios me lo guarde. God bless you. Oh, may God keep you. May the peace of God just reign in your lives now and forevermore. And thank you for watching OBM. Amen. Thank you, everyone. All is beautifully said. We bless you. We love you. Please continue to visit um, OVM.com and our social media. Leave your messages. We want to hear from you. And we just want to wish you the best on this day and every day. Bye-bye. Yeah.